Okay, YouTube. Now, in this video here, I'm going to talk to you about um, memory. When we create a variable, it takes up memory on our computer. So, for instance, here, <clears throat> integer type variables take up four bytes of memory. Boolean types and char types will take up one byte. Float will also take up four bytes, and double will take up eight bytes of memory here. Uh, the, uh, don't worry about that so much. Just know that variables will take up a, s a small amount of memory here. When we create one variable, we're going to take up a little bit of memory. <coughs> In this case, I'm only going to take up four bytes of memory here because I created one variable here. Now, when we use memory in our computer, don't think it's permanent. It does get returned. It's It gets returned back. Okay, so we only borrow memory temporarily here. When our program is done running, it is destroyed here. So, <clears throat> And all the programs that we've ran in the past here, if you watched all my videos, we only... All the variables that we've created have been destroyed and freed from the memory, from our computer, which is good, because we don't want to have a bunch of garbage memory here. Just went from running a bunch of programs. So what happens is when I run this program here, nothing visible happens. But what really, what's really going on here, I'm going to make a variable that takes up four bytes here. When I come across this return statement, the variable will get destroyed here. So what, what happens here, when I, when I initialize a variable here, there is a function that called the, it's called the constructor function. And it basically creates, it reserves a spot on the RAM for this particular variable here. <coughs> basically, uh, your RAM will have a bunch of, your RAM's, um, in a nutshell, is consisted, cons uh, consists of a bunch of memory positions, or you can say memory boxes. Think of a bunch of, think of like a six billion cardboard boxes that you can just put stuff in there. And each one, has its own unique thing in it. So in this case we're going to borrow four boxes to make this variable here. Four bytes of memory. And then when the program's done running we free up those boxes and those boxes are used by other things here. So when you run programs in the back <coughs> um, you know it's, it's it's using space on the RAM. But I don't want to go to... and then when you shut down your computer Everything that's on the RAM will go to your hard drive, which is your basically your your memory that's not active here. Your RAM is going to be your your active memory, and pretty much. But okay, moving on here. <coughs> I want you to know what destroys variables here. If I make a variable in here, <coughs> if I make a variable here. Uh, um, I have two variables here. Now, if I run this program here, well, basically, nothing visible happens to us, to the user, because we don't. The user is not going to see the code. But uh, we make a variable here and we destroy a variable here. So what happens <clears throat> when I, when I, when the compa computers, when the compiler is running through this code here, when it reads this line here, there are no var variables created from us. I mean, we don't know. We really don't know what's been created up here, <clears throat> and we really don't care because we uh, we didn't write that. We we're actually using it. That when we get to here, we customly made this variable here, and it takes up four bytes of memory here. Now, when I create this here, I have a total of eight bytes of memory u memory um, being used right now. Assuming it's compiling here now, when I get through here. I still have 8 bytes here, but now when I exit out of the uh, scope, when I actually get exit out through this brace here, you see, think of these braces as doors here. We enter, we enter this door from here to here. Now we're in scope here within this variable here. When we get from here to here, we're outside of scope. Anytime we go outside of scope, all the variables that have, that were in this scope are destroyed here. So, when I get to this intermediate step here, this variable does not exist. It's destroyed. Anytime we exit out of a variable here, there is an invisible function called the destructor function here. 
we're not going to worry about that. We don't care about how it works. Just know that it's there and it destroys variables anytime you exit outside the scope here. So I mean, just keep in mind that when you're in this visible scope here, we cannot just go. We can't jump into the scope here and change it again because it's destroyed by the destructor. And that's the same thing for when we come across a return value here. It'll destroy every, like this return value is in the main scope here. It'll destroy all variables that were within that scope. Now it wouldn't destroy this because this has already been destroyed here. But just keep that in mind here. Let me show you one example here. So just keep in mind there's invisible destructors here. Anytime we exit outside scopes here, um, variables get destroyed in here. Let me just make one up. INT something. And uh, we have INT U tube. Okay. And all we do, all this thing's going to do here is uh, we're going to say X is equal to U tube times 2. Then we're going to output, or then we're going to return x plus 1. Okay. Just, it just does something. This is just a function that does something here. And of course, i got to initialize it here. <coughs> so look and think at this function here. When I run this function here, let's say I call it anywhere in the main function here, I'm going to create two more variables here. And then they will both get destroyed here. <coughs> so let me just uh, wrap this up here. Let me just output um, something of 4. And it should say 9 real quick, but you won't be able to see it. <coughs> so let's just run through here. So first we have a me here. We have no variables created. We have 4 bytes up here. Now we have now we are going to call this function here. Now we're going to enter a new scope here. <coughs> now we didn't actually leave the main scope here. <coughs> we just entered a new one here. It's like an, just like as we entered this one here. It's an embedded scope here. Just imagine that I copy and paste this piece here and just put it over this line here. Or just this function here. But we're only going to output the return value here. So right here we have one variable here plus the two variables that have been initialized here. When this function hits this return value here, those two variables are destroyed. They're done. Now when I get to this intermediate step here, I'm going to put a little space here. When I exit out this function here, through the return statement, those two variables are destroyed. Now, so now I'm back to one variable here at this intermediate step here. So those two variables are, are free from memory here. We just emptied those boxes out. Now we create another variable here. Now we only have a total of two variables here. Now we destroy that one again. Destroy it immediately. We make it and we destroy it. Then we destroy the me here. So notice that uh, when, every time these variables got destroyed, it was either by a return value, which it will always be. It'll just, the return value will destroy everything within this scope here. And this one here will destroy here. So let's say I made this void. Let's just, I just make this void here. And um, let me get rid of this thing. See it right here, it doesn't know what to output. Well, in this case, all these functions, except all the variables except this one here, is going to be destroyed by exiting out of scope here. This, this variable here will be destroyed by a return value here. But that's it. So, anytime you come across a return value, your, your variables will be called by the destructor. And, um, and, um, when we come across a return value, all those variables will be destroyed by the return value here. It'll call a destructor in there and destroy all the variables that are within that scope. So, that's it <coughs> on this one here. And, um, we will continue on for uh, we'll continue on with this on the next lesson. You'll you'll see why this is important here. Otherwise, I would have just made this an add-on if it wasn't important. <coughs> so that's it, and I'll see you in the shortly in the next tutorial. Oops, I guess it. What is it? It's Control F10.